Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today is our eighth installment in our Dry Dock Wednesday series. It's been eight weeks since we were able to announce that we have half of the money to go into Dry Dock. And uh, today's video, we're going to talk about our relationship with Dry Dock number three. In last week's video, and there's a link to uh, all the other videos in the series down in the description below, uh, we talked about uh, one of the questions we answered is why we're going into that as opposed to a dry dock that's further away or floating dry dock or anything like that. And really, it comes down to two different answers. One, that is the closest one. It's only six miles away. And two, this ship has a relationship with that dry dock. And, and today we're going to talk briefly about that because today, September 20th, 2023, is the 56th anniversary of this ship going into that dry dock for the most recent time. September 20th, 1967, Battleship New Jersey entered dry dock number three at the Philadelphia Navy Yard to be reactivated for Vietnam. But we'll come back to that in a minute. Battleship New Jersey was first built right there at the Philadelphia Navy Yard on the slipways not too far from dry dock number three. We were launched stern first. Because of that, our propellers, our propeller shafts, our rudders were not installed at the time. They didn't want the ship to slide down the ways on those propellers and rudders uh, and then hit the water with those. Uh, so they were not installed. So immediately after hitting the water, a group of tugboats grab her and they pull her into dry dock number three. And uh, she is sit on the blocks there for the very first time. And they install the rudders, the propellers, the propeller shafts, all those important things and finish up any of the underwater work on the ship. At that point, they're able to flood the dry dock, put her back out in the water, uh, tie her up next to a pier, and use the, the pier side crane to load the rest of the equipment onto the ship. There is a chance that following our uh, commissioning and our shakedown trials and all of that, we went into dry dock number three again, but I'm not entirely sure about that. We don't have the complete records for that part of the ship's career. Uh, we've currently got somebody working at uh, the archives for the naval documents down in College Park, Maryland. Uh, so we're getting more of that information. I can't tell you right now, uh, but definitely when the ship was being built, possibly more than once. So the ship goes out, she does her thing, World War II, Korea. She's originally tied up in uh, Bayonne after she's decommissioned in Korea and then the Navy starts to consolidate. So they bring New Jersey down from Bayonne back to the Philadelphia Navy Yard where she was first built. And she's nested with Iowa and Wisconsin. When the decision to reactivate a battleship is determined in 1967, they go on the various battleships there and find that New Jersey's in the best material condition. She had had the longest time to deactivate in the 1950s. Uh, so that's probably why she was in the best condition. Anyway, they pick her. They take her into dry dock uh, right there, September 20th, 1967, in dry dock number three. And they do uh, close to a year's worth of work. All of it's not done in dry dock, some of it's done pier side. But uh, they take her out of the water, they replace some of her propellers, which were in bad shape. They repaint the bottom of the ship. Typically in mothballs, the ship doesn't have an anti fouling coating on the bottom, it's just a normal uh, immersion grade coating because the anti fouling coating works because sliding over the water washes some of the coating away and that uh, allows the, the various substances that are bad for the growth uh, to be exposed on the surface again to prevent that growth continuously. And that doesn't work when the ship is sitting there stationary. So they had to put a new coating on the bottom, they had to take all the blanks off the sea chests, uh, they had to repack the stern tubes, they put new propellers on for the ones that are damaged. The one that's on display here in Camden is replaced at that time. So if you come and visit the ship, be sure to check out the, uh, that one that's just over that way by Wiggins Park. And you can see that's pretty badly dented and, and uh, corroded. So there's a reason why they chose to replace it at that point. And it was that yard period that allowed Battleship New Jersey to become the fastest battleship of all time. During that yard period, they remove a lot of the extra weight on the ship. Things like this 40 millimeter mount uh, where I'm standing right now. They get all the growth off the bottom of the ship 
And so when she goes to run her trials, she's got a clean bottom, there's no drag. She's removed all of this World War II era extra weight, and they haven't added any of the 1980s era missile equipments that add the weight. And so Battleship New Jersey was able to exceed her design speed of 33 knots and got up to a speed of 35.2 knots uh, roughly one year after she goes into the yard in September of 67. Now, we're obviously not going to try and uh, get up to that high speed after this yard period, but while we're underway uh, with the tug to and from the yard, we will be the fastest battleship anywhere in the world during that uh, period of time. You might notice that this part of the bow is freshly done. It looks just like it did when we got out of dry dock. We are approaching the end of our redecking project. And remember, we are selling all of the teak that we rip up from the deck. There's a link in the description below to the museum store if you'd like to buy some of this teak. Uh, all of the money you spend on that or anywhere else in the store goes back into the restoration of the ship. So we really appreciate your support. Uh, check out that link down below. So we chose to shoot this video now because it was extremely timely and because we don't have any new information for you. But to stay up to date on the most recent information, remember to tune in every Wednesday at 7. We'll release another dry dock video to let you know how far we've made it in the process. And also, check the link in the description below. That'll take you to our dry docking page of our website. And there are uh, the, the most recent information we have on the dry docking process, as well as a place you can donate to support us. Uh, donating to support the dry dock will help us get into dry dock quicker because we have half of the money. We need another $5 million to do this project. By the time we leave the dry dock, we have to have paid our bills in full or they will not release the ship and we will continue to rack up a bill because we have to pay them every day we're out of the water. So we have to do all this fundraising before we go into dry dock. Your donations are really appreciated. Uh, we have a lot of history with Dry Dock Number 3 and the Philadelphia Navy Yard, and we're so excited to be able to go back there that the uh, owners of the yard are willing to work with us. So, uh, do you have any questions about the process we didn't answer last week in our uh, answering 10 questions about the dry docking process? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below to continue donating if you want to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.